Hi folks, this is Sean Bagshaw from OutdoorExposurePhoto.com and PhotoCascadia.com. In this video, I want to show you how to use the new Select and Mask tool that came out in the 2015.5 update of Photoshop CC. If you've followed my other Photoshop videos, you know that I think selections and masks are two of the features that make Photoshop such a powerful and precise image developing application. In my workflow, I use various types of selections, including luminosity selections, to create masks that help me target adjustments just where I want them and also to help with the process of exposure blending. In the past, I made frequent use of the Refine Selection and Refine Mask tools in Photoshop to modify and perfect different kinds of selections and masks. The new Select and Mask task space replaces the Refine tools and significantly improves on them. For example, in this image, I want to create a selection that will allow me to separately adjust the sky and the landscape to create better tonal balance between the two. So I need a selection that will allow me to adjust the sky separately from the land. Anytime there is something in the land overlapping the sky, especially a tree like this one, makes creating a usable selection really difficult. The new Select and Mask tool can really help with this type of intricate selection. With the old Refine tool, you had to begin by first making a selection and then going to the Refine tool to refine the selection. You can still do it that way with Selected Mask. For example, if I use the Quick Selection tool and just make a quick selection of the sky, and then if I were to go up to Select and Select and Mask, it now takes me to the Select and Mask task space and you can see that selection that I had already made is represented there. However, you no longer have to make a selection first. So let me cancel out of this and deselect the selection. Now with Select and Mask, you can just go directly to the Select and Mask task space with no selection already loaded. Here you will find most of the selection tools that you need to make a good selection. There's a quick selection tool, a refine edge tool, a paintbrush or a quick mask tool, and the lasso tool. I'm going to start with the quick selection tool and just make a selection of the sky. And it'll find the edge of the mountains. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a selection that goes all the way through this tree and up into the sky up here. This will take a little while for it to fill in all of these gaps but we'll keep working with it until we've selected the whole tree right down to the landscape. Like that. Now I'm going to get the Refine Edge tool and come in and paint with the Refine Edge tool along the tree so that it can find those tree edges and create a more refined mask in all of those areas. And that did an amazing job. There's also this one little area of grass right on the edge of the sky that I want to refine as well. Just like in the old refine tools, we have different view modes. And there's a new one called Onion Skin, which we're in right now. And you can change the transparency of the onion skin so that you see only the checkerboard where the selection edge is or you can bring in more of the background image uh, and find the right degree of onion skin overlay to help you make the selection and know that you got what you want and you can also view it just like you could in the refine tool you could view the marching ants or the selection lines uh, a red overlay on black on white and so on Whichever one helps you know that you've got the selection just how you want it. You also have the option to do edge detection if you feel there are some kind of rough edges that uh, by increasing the edge detection radius it would help fill in some of those rough edges. And other global refinements just like you had in the refine tools such as smoothing, feathering, contrast of the edge, and shifting the edge. If it turns out that you actually wanted a land selection and not a sky selection, you can use the invert button 
and that'll take the inverse of whatever selection you've created. But in this case I do want the sky selection so we'll stay with that. Once you have the selection looking how you want it, you can decide how to output that selection. You can output it as a selection, or as a layer mask, or as a new layer, or as a new layer with its own layer mask, new document, and a new document with a layer mask. In this case, I'm going to output it as a selection because I want to use that selection to make a mask on a levels adjustment layer. So I'll click OK and we're back in Photoshop with that sky selection and actually I'm going to save that sky selection because I may want to use it again. So I could either go up to select and save selection right there in the menu or if you have the TK Actions V4 panel you can click the red save button right here and I'll call this my sky selection and that will save that selection right here in the channels panel so I can get it back if I ever want it again. And next I said I want to make a levels adjustment to the sky. So with that selection active, I'll click on the TK Actions V4 panel, the levels button, or in the layers panel, I would click the levels adjustment layer in the menu right there. And there's my levels adjustment layer, which I can open up here. And I want to brighten the highlights in that sky, so I'm going to bring that white slide over. And I want to increase some contrast, so I'm going to bring down the midtones a bit, and then also bring over the darks to try to create a little darker, more moody, dramatic mood in the sky. Okay, so there is my sky adjustment through that mask, and that mask that I was able to make with the Select and Mask tool, you can see is very detailed and does a great and invisible job. But I also want to balance the tonality in this image a little better by also lightening the landscape. So this is where I'm going to use my sky channel and I'm going to reselect that by control or command clicking on it to reload that selection. And now I can take the inverse which in the select menu is select inverse or in the TK Actions V4 panel is just the inverse red button right here and the inverse of the sky selection is the land selection and for this one I'm going to make a curves adjustment layer and for the curves adjustment layer I'm going to use the targeted adjustment tool and go in and find some of these lighter tones maybe in the tree trunks right here and lighten all of that and then I may go into some of these darker tones back here in the mountain and darken those a bit to create some better contrast, find the right spot in there. And so there we go. With those two adjustments, I've now been able to balance the tones in that image and the masks that guided those adjustments are really finely detailed masks and they were made possible by the new Select and Mask tool in Photoshop CC. 2015.5. There's a couple other points I'll make really quickly. Uh, one is that if you are using the TK Actions V4 panel, as long as you make a selection first, you can still use the red refine button and it will now take you to the select and mask task space. The other tip is that if you want to further refine a mask that's already been made, you can double click on that mask and that will reopen the mask in the select and mask task space. And then you can make adjustments to that mask here and um, decide you know, exactly what those adjustments are going to look like. And once you've made those and click OK, then those adjustments will be updated in that mask. Now that's not the adjustment that I wanted to make. I liked how the mask was before, but I just wanted to show you how you can modify a mask using Select a Mask if you need to. So that's a quick look at the new Select a Mask feature. It's a great option for making and perfecting challenging selections of masks in Photoshop.